Boom, blast. A great time of year. The NBA Finals is over, but still so much going on in the NBA. And you know what? A lot going on today in Raptor land as well, as we're taping this on Thursday night. And earlier on Thursday, the Toronto Raptors introduced a brand new head coach. But he's really not that new no. to the sidelines or the bench of the Raptors because it's assistant coach Nick Nurse promoted to head coach. Mr. Andrew Webster, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. We threw out who we thought should get the gig. We were both wrong. Jay, what do you make Jay, of Nick Nurse? Hey, Jay Wright, staying in Villanova. Who knew? <laughs> um, what do I make about Nick Nurse? Bro, honestly, don't know a lot about the guy. Here's what I do know. Is that the, <laughs> the Raptors got a great deal on hiring him as their head coach. Oh. In terms of money that they're paying him. And money they're saving by not paying Casey. Exactly. Because I think it's it's an interesting point that it's interesting that you took that angle, but the end point is kind of where I was going with this too, Webby. So here's what I think happened, right? I think that Dwayne Casey did want some level of uh, stability, right? Like yeah. he wanted some like reassurance. Hey, like how about an extension? Like we've had sustained success here for how long? Every year we keep getting better. I keep getting better every year. His contract's running out after next year. Who knows when Kyle's going to fall off, when Serge is going to fall off. But whenever that does happen, this whole thing here, Casey did play a huge part in building. And so I don't begrudge him at all for trying to get an extension. But I think what happens is Masai says, we can't give you an, they're not going to give you an extension, right? Like it's a tough sell to say, hey, we keep losing every year to the Cavs and the second round is like our max and we're going to extend our coach. So what I think happened was he let him go now so that there were so many jobs available this offseason. Let him go now when there's a tons, tons of jobs that he could land somewhere else. And you end up hiring your assistant coach because in terms of the program that you've been building for the past five years, you're happy where, with where that's at. You're happy about you've got the look that you've been given through from the top down of your franchise. You've got an, you don't really want to bring in a new guy. No, you've got right? one of the authors of the, uh, what is it? The cultural rebuild, they called it culture reset, the culture reset. So Nick nurse, obviously one of the authors of that cultural reset, right? Somebody who's mm -hmm. been there for a little while, but for my, for me, it's like, bro, I, I understand not getting rid of Casey, especially with, uh, the, security that he was looking for and the pay he was looking for but man there like we kind of brought this up when the Raptors got eliminated it seems a little to me with this team it's like the inmates running the asylum Ooh. and the it with the team it seems like DeMar and Kyle have the most power when it comes to I, th I thought that with Dwayne Casey uh as well I mean we heard those famous stories that uh, you know, DeMar had to go to Dwayne on behalf of Kyle and vice versa, right? He was kind of the go between between those between those two personalities. Now, with Dwayne yeah. Casey not there, and you have a assistant coach that's been bumped up, uh, it's going to be even worse. I, I really think that Kyle and DeMar are going to be running this team in terms of I'm... what they want to do and the direction they want to take it on the court. I don't see Nick Nurse really putting his foot down and coming up with uh, amazing set plays or anything like this. Like, it, listen, obviously he's going to be better at set plays than Dwayne Casey, but that's not tough either. But this was a very strange move, almost to placate those two guys. Um, you know what? It's, it's one of those things, honestly, Webby, that I think we talked about before. And it's all about what your expectations were. And we try to tell a, a few things, right? And I'm going to pat ourselves on the back here, Webby, because not only did we tell you about, you know, some of these articles that were done by American writers, and they really highlighted Nick Nurse and the role that Nick Nurse played with this culture reset and how he developed this from, you know, the Houston Rockets organization, this whole shooting threes and layups and how that they worked with the in the offseason with the bench mob and got that to work. Not only did we tell you about that when those stories came out earlier on in the regular season, 
We also told you to manage your expectations, right? And to not listen so much as to what was being spewed out there by not only Raptors brass, but also Raptors media. What I mean by that is, if your expectations were championship or bust, or you thought that the Raptors were going to beat the Cavs, then you were expecting, oh, if Dwayne Casey's gone, we're going to bring in another coach, and another coach is going to get us over the hump. And that's going to be the difference. And it's like, that's not realistic. And and we we knew that. We were telling you that. And now that this has played out, this is Masai Jiri to me, how I'm reading this. This is Masai Jiri telling you, hey, we are satisfied, not satisfied, but we're okay with where the team is right now. We yeah. built this team up from being a bottom basement organization, not even a respectable franchise in the NBA, where their most the biggest highlight was in a dunk contest, right? right? Or Vince going to his graduation. Other than that, it's been the lottery and mistakes in the lottery, to be honest. And since then, Masai's come in. He's taken them into the playoffs consistently. They've improved every year since Dwayne Casey's been there, for sure. But on top of that, it's a process, right? And I don't mean to make the joke about the Sixers. We'll get to that later. But, you know, it's about bigger things, right? And it's about making the this franchise sustainable success and sustainable success for this franchise is not championships yet you're not there yet it's about consistently being in the playoffs it's about consistently building basketball fans that have an understanding of what it's like to cheer for a winning team night in and night out in the regular season it's about building a culture and building a a a setup where you can interchange your players and it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, your structure and the foundation of what you're building is bigger than any one player. And they've been successful in doing that, right? This is a team that made the conference finals in spite of their two best players being arguably their worst players, right? Like, we forget about that. That's a thing that happened. And so when they got rid of Casey and it's like, well, we're just going to promote an assistant. Well, it's the assistant that showed you that his offense works last year, right? Like, we yeah. saw that. Now... Am I saying Nick Nurse is the answer and he's going to solve all the problems? No, but he's going to maintain the ship. He's going to steer the ship in the same direction that this this boat was already going, which is to stay, sustain stay success. The stay the course. That's all they're trying to do. Because, again, if they lose to LeBron every year in the second round of the playoffs, they'll tell you they're mad, but they're still going to jack up ticket prices each and every year, yeah. right? And they can do that as long as they're in the playoffs. And that's something that for the majority of this franchise's existence, they hadn't been able to say before Masai Ujiri got there. And hiring Nick Nurse, as much as Raptors fans don't want to hear it, because fans want to hear, we're winning a championship. We're trying to win a championship. And trust me, they are trying to improve each and every year. But what do we say each and every week, Webby? There's levels to this <laughs> shit. And the Raptors yet aren't on that championship level yet. You got to get there. You got to start and build the foundation. And they've done that. And this is all a part of that process. And keeping Nick Nurse, someone who's familiar with what you're trying to do and what you're trying to build, that's all part of the plan. Masai's plan. That, right? I mean, and then, you know what? I, I, I'm mistaken when I said that, that DeMar and Kyle are the ones holding all the power on this team. That's not right. You're right. It's Masai's team. And he's the one holding all the power. And I don't want people to get this misconstrued, right? Like, I'm not a, I'm not a Raptors apologist. I'm not trying to defend the move of hiring Nick Nurse because I think that the issues within this team rely with its players. Like, I don't think that they should have re-signed Serge. I don't think that they should have re-signed Kyle Lowry. But I understand why they did that. And they did that because it's a first sign of continued success. And so you want to ride that out and maintain that for as long as you can. And hey, maybe along the way you catch a break. Maybe LeBron gets hurt. Maybe, you know, whatever goes down and you, you get into the NBA Finals. They weren't that far off from that happening, right? Like, And so with that said, this is kind of the exact same thing. Would I have hired, you know, would I have hired Nick Nurse? Or would I have tried to get a better coach or whatever? I mean... Probably, but at the same time, who was his first pick was Budenholzer? Yeah, yeah. But like, 
I'm pretty sure Raptors fans would have been more mad if they hired Budenholzer. I think that if they had hired Budenholzer, maybe Raptors fans, you're right, would have been upset. But I think the basketball circles would have seen it as a more legit hire and a longer-term solution than what I think Nick Nurse is. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, and I mean, we don't really know what Nick Nurse is, per se, right? And I mean, there's a pretty cool story that came out today that kind of explained that, you know, for those who don't know, Nick Nurse was coaching in Europe. I think he was coaching in, like, London, England or something for a while. But uh, he was coming back to Iowa, and he got wind that there was a, a – the D-League was coming, right? The NBA Development League was coming. It was about to be a thing. And he was back in Iowa, and he was driving around, and he found out that – he saw that there was an arena, and the arena wasn't there yet. And I think they had, like, a minor league hockey team or something. So in his head, he was like, you know what? I have a plan. So he was friends with like a lawyer who had like pretty good political corrects or yeah. corrects political connects in the area. Right. And who was also a basketball fan. He said, Hey, have you ever thought about bringing a D league team to Des Moines? And the guy's like, that would actually be <laughs> kind of cool. So he had the political connects to get it done. Right. They apply, they get the, the D league team. And then Nick Nurse becomes the coach of said team. He literally created his first coaching job in the quote unquote NBA. I know it's a D league, but still like that was his coaching gig, his head coaching gig in North America. He literally created that. I think that's just a pretty cool story along the way. But when you add in the other things we talked about on this podcast, you know, that he won the D league title with the, the D league team. That's the affiliate of the Houston Rockets and, they really started that whole program that you see now with the Houston Rockets where they're taking threes instead of uh, yeah. long twos. And the whole practice thing where corner corner threes are worth four points, mid-range shots are worth zero. It's interesting, you know, and it's, it's one thing where Masai talked about thinking outside the box, right, and wanting to be ahead of the curve instead of riding the wave of what else is going on in the NBA. It's super interesting. Now, again... Do I think Nick Nurse, as currently constituted, is winning a championship? No. Do I think that they're going to beat LeBron James if the Cavs were still there? Do I think they're beating the Sixers or the Celtics next year? No. But they're sustaining this level of success, which is something that we hadn't seen before in this city. And I understand what they're doing. Do I agree with it? Do I want them to win a championship? Of course. But, so hey. Right now, mm -hmm. as it stands... What are your expectations for the Raptors next year? The same to do the same thing that they did this year. They'll they'll to make the playoffs. No, they'll they'll make the playoffs and win a round. Make the playoffs, win a round. I don't. As think... a Raptor fan, you would be happy if Nick Nurse led the Raptors to the playoffs and won a first round matchup. I'm not saying I'd be happy as a Raptors fan, but I'd be satisfied. Like I wouldn't be mad at that because here's the reality: if you're bringing back this exact same team which again, we'll get to in like a couple seconds. But, you know, if you're bringing back this exact same team, we've seen what this team can max out at. And that's basically whenever they run into LeBron. So now, even if LeBron's gone, you're talking about a Celtics team that is pretty damn good, a Sixers team that is also pretty damn good, a uh, Milwaukee Bucks team we, we assume will get better with better coaching. Like, it's a tough goal for the Raptors, right? And I just right. don't know that if... At the end of the day, it's that easy to say, hey, you know, we're just going to make a, a, a few little minor tweaks and boom, we're in the finals. I don't think it's that easy. I really don't. And if you're Masai Ujiri, there's a couple things here. Oh, actually, I do want to do this, actually, Webby. There's an article written in uh, the Bleacher Report last week, and it had a couple potential trade packages for DeMar DeRozan or Kyle Lowry. Now, again, these aren't like rumors that are like, you know, substantiated by like oh this is something that's on the table these are just things that when you go through numbers and try to to see landing okay. spots that might work you know for both organizations if this is something that the raptors should consider again okay hit. not a rumor nobody's reporting this these are just potential deals that would work with the old trade machine right hypotheticals we'll call them. hypotheticals indeed so mr andrew webster Let's start with the New York Knicks, okay? The New York Knicks oh. get DeMar DeRozan. The Raptors get 
Joe Kim Noah, Ron Baker, and Frank Nilakina. So how long does the Noah contract have left? <laughs> That's uh, a good question. The Noah contracts uh, Noah is owed thirty seven point eight million over the next two seasons. Uh, two seasons. I'll tell you what I do like about it, though, is pairing Ron Baker back up with Fred Van Fleet for <laughs> which which toss which toss state action. But no, uh, I'm going to decline that trade because you're bringing on uh, Frank. Uh, oh boy, Frank Nil- Nilakina. Nilakina, you're bringing him on. I guess almost to try and replace. Uh, learn from Kyle Lowry, maybe learn a little bit of offense from one of a one of the better offensive point guards in the NBA right now. I uh, will give Kyle Lowry his due for sure. But in doing that, you're losing the best player who's ever played for your franchise, uh, and you now don't really have a two guard that you can start. Yeah, I don't know how much, and I know there's there's a lot of different things that are going to get floated around over the next few weeks. So you know buyer beware in terms of the rumors that you're reading grain of salt grain of salt take everything with the grain of salt exactly and i would if if you're choosing which one you would give up i would rather keep demar and trade kyle lowry but if demar derozan if i'm trading demar derozan i think i want a little more i need a little more back yeah and i also don't know that i want to trade him to the knicks and still have to play the knicks yeah you know very often because that's a division rival as well right if if Noah's contract is coming off the books at the end of this season, then maybe that's a little more intriguing because then you're really freeing up a lot of cap room. But to have Noah on your roster for another two years is tough. It's a tough ask. No, definitely, definitely. Uh, let's move on to the next trade here, Webby. And it is the San Antonio Spurs. They would get Ooh. Kyle Lowry. Ooh. The Toronto Raptors receiving the other way, Pal Gasol, Patty Mills, and Deontay Murray. Ooh. Now I kind of like that. Now I kind, I definitely like that one a little more than DeRozan. Um, because not only are you replacing one for one, are you bringing in a uh, Patty Mills who's really, honestly, like so underrated? I think, mm-hmm. like a t- a tough dude. Uh, we all know that we love the Aussies here on the On Blast podcast. Um, Patty Mills can play. You're also bringing in a Pau Gasol, a great mentor for a guy like Jonas Valanciunas, somebody who can teach him some of the ways of the old school, as Pau Gasol knows. And Deontay Murray is one of those Spurs guys, a lot like uh, I really liked Jonathan Simmons two years ago, and I thought he was great for the Magic this year. I don't think they used him enough as they should have, and hopefully you would think that if you did get a Deontay Murray back in that deal, he's a piece that the Raptors could really use in that big, fleshed-out rotation that they have as well. It's bringing Deontay Murray from a role that he's used to and putting him into a similar role here with the Raptors. I like that deal. I'm ready to do it. I would do that deal in a second, to be honest, because I think Deontay Murray is young. He's a great defensive player. Uh, Patty Mills gives you still that some of that three point shooting and scoring that Lowry would give you, and Pau Gasol also a kind is of... a vet. He's giving you, I mean, you're not getting much from from Pau Gasol at this stage of his career. No. But and honestly, he's more that. like an he's more like an assistant coach at this point. Somebody that you sit next to you you tell Jonas Valanciunas sit next to him on a flight. Yep, yep. Just keep your ears open, keep a pad and pen, and learn from Pau Gasol. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, next up, this one got a little headway early on, but would you trade to the Minnesota Timberwolves, DeMar DeRozan, for Andrew Wiggins? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. You said that very calm and cool. Yeah. Me, very calm and cool. Yeah, like, <sighs> Wiggins is funny, man. Like, I think that we know what Wiggins is. Hmm. Okay. I think he's hovering around 20 points a game. Somebody who won't take the big shots all the time. The, so the He's the third best player on a team. Yeah. On a legit contending team, he's the third, maybe the fourth best player. Yeah. No, that's super interesting. That's super interesting. Um, 
I, for me to make that trade, I would have to know something is up with DeMar. Do you know what I mean? Like in terms of like inside info that I don't have, but someone like Masai Jiri would have to know that, right. you know what? I don't think that DeMar is getting much better than this. And I really need to change something within this locker room to like shake things up. So let me bring in Wiggins and take a chance. You know, I would have to know a little something. But from what we do know of DeMar DeRozan, that like he's continued to improve each and every year. He's a pretty good guy. He's a he's a pretty low maintenance superstar or star in terms of how the NBA is. You know, I would keep DeMar DeRozan and, and, and keep what I know about DeMar DeRozan as opposed to trading him for a younger Andrew Wiggins that might not ever turn into what DeMar DeRozan is. Not only that, but you're kind of setting Wiggins behind the eight ball a bit Mm -hmm. because he's going to be looked at to come in here and be the savior to uh, pick up the mantle that uh, uh, DeMar DeRozan threw down. I mean, in this hypothetical trade that we're making. (laughs) Yes. But the problem is, is that Wiggins doesn't have the offensive skill that DeMar DeRozan has. And then to bring him in and the first few crappy games that he has you know the comparisons are going to start well Wiggins will never be as good as DeMar DeRozan was then the home crowd starts to get on him acts a little tougher towards him because he is a local guy and then you've got a bad situation for Wiggins I think for a guy like Wiggins he really has to be in the perfect situation where the talent around him is fostered for his skills Yeah, I mean, it's super interesting. I wonder how that's going to play out for Wiggins in Minnesota. I just don't know that bringing him to Toronto is the move. But, hey, that's why we have fun, fake, made-up trades, right? Uh, They're pretty Um, good ones. uh, One more, though. And this is the one that I would really be into if I'm the Raptors. Okay. Trading Kyle Lowry to the Miami Heat for Goran Dragic and Kelly Olenek. I do like Dragic. (laughs) It's just like, so what would... I don't know how much better the Raptors are after on that trade, but I'm banking on the fact that Kyle Lowry will decline a little more next year. Yeah. And Dragic is still at the same level. Right. Right? So very similar. Lowry is better than, he's a better player than Dragic. Very similar. You're also getting, getting Kelly. Yeah. But where are you going to play Kelly? You can play Kelly, man. Yeah. You can play Kelly with Siakam. Can't, yeah, and what backup center? Sure, sure. I'm I'm down with that. I'm down with that. It's good because it's like uh, it's, he's like Tyler Hansbro 2.0 for the Raps. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be fun. Um, That's an interesting yeah. one. I don't know if I would do it if I was the Raps though. Super interesting and always fun to go through trades. So if you're listening to this, hit us up. Let us know what you think of some of these trades that we just made up and, you know, or that we uh, co-signed here from the Bleacher Report. Am I wrong to not love Wiggins? No, I don't think you're wrong for that. I don't don't want to be seen as anti-Canadian. No, 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 no. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, even if you get into the Canada basketball side of things where Wiggins isn't playing this summer, but... You know, there's talk as to why that is. And, I mean, it's just not a good scenario. It's not a good look for a guy when every other NBA dude is, like, making, going out of their way to play for Canada, right? Including guys like Tristan, who's been in the NBA Finals the past, what, four yeah. years in a row? Is Murray and he's fighting his way. Jamal Murray, yeah. I'm pretty sure Jamal Murray is playing. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Wiggins... I don't know. He he needs to find something. I don't know if it's, you know, get a different coach. I don't know if it's a different situation. Just something up. Or maybe this is just what he is. Someone with immense talent and athleticism, but just doesn't really get to that full potential that pe- other people place on him. Doesn't have every piece of the puzzle. Boom, blast.